on this computer. Hello. Yeah, and I think we're live. Great. All right. Perfect. Hi, Alice. Hey. Hi, Johanna. So good to finally <laughs> see you. Oh, so great. I'm honored to talk with you. <laughs> so for <laughs> context, whatever. For, yeah. So for context for everyone, I uh, very often work as a shopper for OSF especially in the last few years. So Alice and I have spent a lot of time with each other on the phone, but never actually like seen each other face to face. I know, it's so wild. I like your glasses. <laughs> Thank you. They're vintage. I love them. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Alice, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Alice Chu Risser. I um, am the Associate Costume Director the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. I've uh, been in that position just only a couple of years. And then prior to that, part of the interim costume director team, also interim costume craft supervisor, just clearly a little changeover. <laughs> that yeah, just a kind little. of happened in the last three years. Um, just different, different things happening, um, retirement and um, people shifting. Um, and before then, I was master stitcher and a wardrobe person. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I just love making costumes. So this career, um, later in life, finding it is, is been the answer to um, my love for making things, my um, team building, or just, just working with people. I've definitely um, really relished in that. Um, I come from New York uh, and from a visual art background. So I did a lot more sculpture and printmaking and I really wanted to work alone, <laughs> just really have all control. And, and that wasn't, it wasn't really working for me. I, I liked to also work with people. So I got into, you know, natural foods and um, just, just um, working with I mean, in a new natural food store, <laughs> working with um, just different things to pay the bills, clearly. Um, but I didn't know costume building. It was just so, it, it didn't, I mean, I was not enriched in the theater arts, <laughs> um, going through high school and college at all. Um, but, um, but it's fine. I mean, because you can learn things and just, it's just with practice, you get better and better. Um, uh, I love that the designers that I meet are just so out there really making narratives come to life through clothes. So um, I don't know, I, I just really enjoy it. This uh, COVID time has been odd, but um, slowly back, getting back into the festival part-time, it's weird. <laughs> how, did, how did you actually start doing costumes then? Um, I, th there was a job open. I literally just applied because through sculpture making, I really, um, it was weird. It, it just turned into a lot of sewing and a lot of building fabric. And um, I loved fiber arts. I'm a huge like Renee Stout, Betty Saar fan. Um, the, anyway, the, the, just the, the bridge between visual arts, quilt and crafting. And what is that? It really, it, you know, to me, it really, um, was kind of the same um, in a through line. Um, garment making, I did not, I didn't really consider fashion, fashion and you know, all of the things that um, it's pretty negative aspects <laughs> in, um, in building. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, so just through, you know, I really wanted to, you know, um, well, I didn't really want to, but I found myself going with essentials, the, you know, um, fibers, dirt, just clay, you know, um, bread making even, I mean, you know, like a bread dough art, <laughs> miniatures, just, just things that were like the elements of things that then um, it really translated. Um, I also like to make clothes for myself. So, I, you know, I just was always doing it. And so there was a position open in 04, 2004, something like that um, at, OSF and um, we my husband and I were running a cafe in in Talent Oregon of all places <laughs> it was fine but but really small and not we're so not adjusted yet to 
um, it was not, it, there people don't walk to get coffee in Tallinn. Maybe there is now. I, I think there is. <laughs> but anyway, um, but but yeah, so through that, I, I really needed a job. <laughs> so, you know, why not try stitching and, and see what that's like? Um, I love putting puzzles together and figuring things out. Um, printmaking really, you know, the final project product and then you just have to think backwards and um in reverse and um and it made sense to me there's a lot that made sense um yeah so I kind of learned by working and people around me were really patient <laughs> but, I can imagine <laughs> like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah it's actually so funny because I feel like right now I'm heading in the opposite direction from you because I feel like because of the pandemic, I'm actually like looking at like visual art and textile art again and being like, how can I use this in my daily life? And how can I do some of this on my own, maybe without the structures of like a giant theater to support me? Like, how can I still tell a story? Yeah, yeah. right. I mean, I saw your latest images of the set design and that's so oh, yeah. it's amazing. I feel like I want to be there. <laughs> to be part oh, of that that's so wonderful I know I actually don't do set design very often so it, okay, okay. it's like fun to like kind of like unleash it um that was actually that was like a really wonderful process to work on great yes Excellent. so you were already living in Oregon this is the thing. yeah for a couple just one and a half years yeah uh -huh. yeah and um and I loved Ashland just in passing lived in San Francisco and actually um the hills of Santa Cruz for a year and um Sonoma County that the and had prior to that graduated from the Evergreen State College mm -hmm. in Olympia Washington so I loved driving up and down the coast and we always like stopped in Ashland and, mm -hmm. so um but and uh my husband's parents had retired here so it was like easy childcare for us <laughs> Always uh, because I did not want to go to New York again. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, that uh, yeah, I just love the the West Coast and the, and the um, actual coast. So try to get out there as much as possible. <laughs> the ocean. Um, Can yeah. you share with us a little bit about your process? What happens when a designer walks into the room? Like, how does that work? At yes. OSF? So at OSF, there's. Um, of course it's huge uh, right i don't yes. even understand the magnitude it's, of how big the shop is at osf because i've never actually been there but oh still, right like, yes i, I mean, feel like every time i call it's a different person like, oh, oh. Like, who like, who's Joanna, in charge now she is our through line get <laughs> get here here's her number yeah exactly uh, what show who what yeah. um but yeah um so prior to covid we were 50 people at when we were up and running and that doesn't even include hair and wigs and wardrobe they're separate um of course the hair and wig masters and and the wig and salon director we have a close relationship with um through the build of course but um but yeah so so it's a lot of us so there are uh, um costume designers who are not in-house they come from you know New York Chicago LA um all over <laughs> and um but in-house we have design assistants so they are the people who communicate with you know the definitely the designer yes but then they're the ones who are really more present during rehearsals and all the little notes that come through rehearsals so the stage manager and design assistant are really close in contact contact um and so what i do <laughs> is is um basically oversee them and also the other supervisors in the space the craft supervisor and the uh, workroom supervisor and that's because there's so many people um and of course there's a costume director marilee ford barrera and she has the first conversation with hired designers um and we really work out logistics backwards when is tech when is opening and really work out a calendar that actually works sometimes it means um zoom fittings even and we might actually go further and further into that um just because it honestly 
we have to make it work. <laughs> so um, that that we're kind of yeah, it's kind of mm-hmm. weird, but um, but yeah, I mean that that's obviously um, one alternative. But um, but back to logistics, we do start with scheduling. So there's so many meetings <laughs> because we like the there in each rendering there's so many things and details so um the broad scope of the storyline the the idea of what the designer and directors and that whole team have um aesthetically worked out and then we just get a lot of information and and there is the idea of collaboration i know we use that word a lot (laughs) but but it really comes to life because it has to do with of course the budget um and the people in the space and what we are able to do um, and what makes sense. There are some parts that can be purchased, um, can be used from our custom rentals warehouse, um, and that's (laughs) osfcustomrentals.org. But um, there is um, that we can use, um, and usually we alter those or that inspires a designer. Okay, we, I like that, but not in this fabric, doesn't work. Um, and and we really try to uh, work with that and, and also collaborate as far as like, um, if there's a prop piece that gets integrated into the costume or is in a pocket of a costume or you know different things that um, just have to live together <laughs> in the show. Um, but yeah, yeah. So there, there's so many meetings <laughs> Wait, so like, to work out. <laughs> here's the crazy thing that's kind of always boggled my mind. How many shows are you guys working on at the same time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and how so far in, out do the shows happen? That's too? such a good question. That's yeah. right. Let me remember. <laughs> um, the, so the, the production calendar is usually, um, so when we're open, it's, it has been, through from like early February, end of January, is that right? (laughs) Through uh, the end of October. Um, And through that, the repertory productions, I mean, those shows are, there's like 11 of them. So they're not all open at the same time, but um, sometimes we have, but like the very first is usually three in succession that open. yeah, and then and it just keeps going and going. <laughs> and then there's three more, and then one more, and then one more. <laughs> but um, so there actually theoretically could be three or four shows that someone is working on in a given two weeks. Um, we tr- really try not to do that. But again, it's about um, how many people are in the space. It's it's so weird to talk about because I know that with the new artistic director, um, Nataki Garrett, that there is a big shift and this COVID break has given us this time. Of course, I'm on layoff, but, <laughs> but, but also it's given us time to really rethink what is it that we want to present and what actually makes sense. The letter we see what white American theater is really informed all theater but but us and we're actively talking about well what have we been doing what are we saying we're doing what well, where, where, where are we going and what can we do and so as far as like production head departments we're really like a lot of the things are um how are what are we doing to continue this 10 out of 12, you know, continue the, the like churning out, oh, we have to do it. They said so. Or, yeah, exactly. And really like, where, what is our part in that? Because there is a moment in every conversation, really, honestly, but, but in any given time of like, wait, 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 how is this fair? How is this equitable? Um, and, 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 uh, and at what, who, who are we answering to? Um, so but anyway, just, just for, to get... Oh, I was just going to yeah. jump in. Oh, sorry. Yeah, please. For everyone else who's watching to know, Nataki Garrett, who's uh, the new artistic director of Oregon Shakespeare Festival, is the Black woman of color. Uh, and it's really exciting to see her take on this huge institution that is uh, in a very white um, 
place, uh, space, you know, occupies a very white place in Ashland, Oregon. That's um, often, uh, I feel like I always hear about like how there's a lot of white supremacy in that, in and around that place and how, what that means for the people who go to theater in that area. Um, she was also recently the artistic director for Denver Center for Performing Arts. That's all really, really exciting right. stuff that's happening now. Right, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so orchestrating this this predominantly white um, state, mm -hmm. <laughs> county, yeah. and theater, and the patrons who come from yeah, far absolutely. away, and yeah, yeah, and really like addressing what what is community, um, and and what is the message, and and what is our service and gift, and then how do we, you know, how does OSF as an institution mm -hmm. relate to other theaters or other, you know, smaller venues or ones that um, we want a long-term relationship with. What does it actually mean to have community just in the county, in the state, in the whole Western mm -hmm. um, coast? Yeah. But um, I also yeah. think I always appreciate it because I feel like as a shopper, I've worked with so many different designers that work at OSF, maybe remotely, but um, that there's always been such a great diversity in them too, like not just in terms of like, uh, in, not just in terms of race or ethnicity, but like also in terms of like people who are maybe like traditionally, like formally trained in school and people who aren't. And then like people who aren't, it's not just New York designers. It's, it's always people from all over the United States, which I think is so interesting and so fascinating to see because that doesn't happen as often. Mm. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So we're trying to, I don't know. I mean, it's, it is, it is a shift. It is really a shift. Um, I recognize it in the space. Um, I mean, there, I mean, even in the renderings there's and research, there really is more attention to the humanity, the person, the actor and research that actually reflects the actor <laughs> and the person <laughs> very important and really <laughs> yes right i mean they're really stemming away from the eurocentric idea of beauty and that this is oh go from that interpret it through this lens and um and and everyone seems to be really game for that and i love it when there is extensive research because once the designer's not there in communication there's paperwork there's you know images there's things to reference and um and of course in this day and age there's texting constantly so you can literally yeah. track people down <laughs> but um and 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 people want to um because as far as what we do we really want to make the, the most accurate depiction of what a designer wants. And then that really answers to the character and obviously the director and the whole um, cast and, and actually like how to make it work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna share some of the things. Some of these I've worked on and some oh, of these great. I haven't. So this is oh, really yes. exciting. Oh, excellent. Yay. <laughs> Uh -huh. Ta-da! Ah, yay! Yay! Didi, so this yes. is yeah, this is Didi. So Didi and I have worked together a lot, and so actually Didi is how I started working at OSF. I can't remember. No way. I think it was. I might have been. Uh, was it on the Wiz? It might have been on the Wiz actually. Was, it, was no this way. First, was first show at OSF? I don't remember. I no, feel no, like I, there was another show. Oh my goodness, how terrible. Oh, I should look it up. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Dee Dee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. whichever it is, I remember like, it was like her, like I think one of her first shows at OSF that I uh, squashed on and that she hired me for. And that's how I started working with OSF. That's how I met all of you. No way, yeah. how wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes, great, excellent. Yes, with Scarecrow, it's actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> played by Cameron, <laughs> but um, this, yeah, so, so um, as you all know, that each, each character is drawn, it's not each actor, so, so um, this look actually is overalls, and then it has all this tool inside, just rows and rows to just make it 
really puffy and stand out, but also um, as light as possible. This was in the Elizabethan. So um, there are evening uh, performances only on the outdoor stage and the Elizabethan stage, but um, but it gets really hot. <laughs> and, and the show, The Wiz, there's so much dancing and singing that um, even if it was indoors, it would be, you know, actors would be so hot. So we really have that in mind a lot. <laughs> um, and also with the outdoor stage, there's weather, there's rain, sometimes snow and even hail. Um, but but um, <laughs> there are, yeah, there's all these like rain protocols that e actors can be out there in the rain. <laughs> it's a stage shelter. <laughs> they, I mean, there are, there, the protocols are, um, if there's lightning and yeah, know, torrential then it's wind, like then done. that's it. Yeah. yeah, but um, but you know, short of that, there's there's okay, we'll have to take the wigs off, take the hats off, you know, or or oh, wow. rain cloak. <laughs> you can go into your street shoes, yeah, all the safety things, but um yeah, and if it's bad, especially um, in Southern Oregon, the smoke has been yeah. pretty terrible consistently that um, there is a, a hold time and the actors and their equity, you know, they, they do vote on, do we go? And if the numbers are just so, there's just all these you know, mm -hmm. committees. Um, but anyway, yeah, so Dee Dee. Yeah, love her. Yeah. Miss In her. Singapore, <laughs> like when you do an outdoor show, you have to plant chili potty, like the like little chilies to like keep <laughs> the soil dry. Like that's the tradition. You like plant them in the four corners. No way. What? Because <laughs> yeah. yes. it's tropical weather. It's always raining here. So oh any my God. Outdoor show, you like have to like plant all the things. Yeah, they're all. Oh, that's so it's really great. Funny. They yeah. fully embracing the outside. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, always. But this looks yes. amazing. What was the um, what was the through line for the Wiz with Dee Dee? Well, um, back in 2016, it's I was a mere master <laughs> It was so weird. Yeah, because I um I worked on primarily the Tin Man mm -hmm. here, but um and and then I did the backstage wardrobe. So um just with the the run and the crew um but um Rodney Gardner played Tin Man and this there was a lot of different leather elements and um vinyl leather and also um on the arms and legs there is actually like a hose and um a digital print of silver to look robotic um and, and yeah so there's a lot that went into this as far as um, patchwork and layers and also trying to think as light and breathable as possible, but it's leather. <laughs> but it's, yep. Oh my goodness. And oh, this is so fun. Christiana Clark, gorgeous. She had these um, wedges. And yeah, I was the, gonna say the shoes, shoes are like- yes! Drama amazing actor. yeah covered and then yeah oh my goodness it's just it just seems so tall <laughs> but yeah and I love um when there are line drawings in detail and sometimes there's um actual requests for it mm -hmm. and then the designer does that <laughs> oh when do you need it by next week oh okay yeah sure sure no problem um and you know a back view or a um what is the original look of it before it gets distressed because sometimes the rendering is just the final look and so um <laughs> you're like oh wait how does it <laughs> but yeah just to make it as clear as possible um yeah. we have to do so many of these right. drawings in grad school <laughs> oh really yeah. the line drawings it was like front side back yeah yeah like every design great. It's so good yeah. <laughs> okay oh these are so oh, and a munch literally inflatable and so those are purchased. Oh. <laughs> fully purchased and the um there was a hood but it did not cover their face and then so the hoods and mitts were um were made but um I think they actually had toms as their shoes oh, the, the little 
canvas mm -hmm. slideshow shoe, um, just for the scene, and 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 then it was a quick change out. So like, was this like inflatable? <laughs> like there was like a motor inside of it that like you there was. I've done yes. that. No way. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, um. We did Shrek last year, and you know the big Farquaad head. Yes. Yeah, so instead of making yeah, yeah, yeah. a Farquaad head, we took like a BB-8 inflatable costume and repainted it and oh like recovered God. it. BB-8, yes. Yeah, it was pretty fun because it was a round, like round That's shape so that we could turn into a head. And yeah, we turned, oh, like, it, they're really fun, but like it's, people can get claustrophobic when they cover like faces and heads. And oh, like right. Yeah. So in this case, it was, it, at least it was mm -hmm. it, elastic. On at the, the neck. sleeves, I mean, on the cuffs, and and yeah, and then and some Velcro. I think they did some um, adjusting, but there was. We always had to recharge the batteries. Yeah. We had backup fan thingies to make sure it all worked. Um, but yeah, it's so great. Difficult to clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put it inside out, drench it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Did they actually dance in them? They did. There were these funny oh little goodness. moves. Yeah. <laughs> so great so fun I don't think anyone knows on their hands like that but <laughs> but yeah there's definitely I was gonna say like this looks a little wishful thinking yeah <laughs> who is that but this is Robert Robert directed Funny. and then did Camille choreograph this as well or who's the oh, I don't remember but maybe so we'll still look it up I can't yeah. remember um but yeah oh my god those hmm because mm -hmm. <laughs> really this was also like the um the girl the per, act, actor who played dorothy was um ashley right ashley kelly yes yeah. ashley so kelly. we did we did another show after that with ashley um and they did it in at dallas theater center first which i wasn't a part of but then it went to playwrights horizons which i assisted dd on um, oh, called no Bella way. the American Tall Tale. Okay. It's actually in the yes. as well. And it was amazing. It was so fun. He is amazing. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> it was really fun mm -hmm. working with her. Oh, great. Yes. Ooh, what's this? And then, yeah. So these are um, Deb Dryden's. So she was a resident. Only a little bit. Oh, right? oh really? Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Um, One show is recently. It recent? Yeah. The way the mountain moved, or yeah, something, like, something that. like that. Okay, that heavily distressed show. <laughs> um, yeah. So for many years, Deb's been a. She still lives in Ashland, um, but she was a resident costume designer here. There was a time where there was more resident designers. We might we might go back to it, <laughs> but um, but anyway, the, she has a book out. It's on a fabric manipulation and dyeing oh. techniques um but she's yeah i think i, I think that was that when book. she was a uh, really yeah you see yeah. san diego when she yeah. was teaching there yeah she's amazing of course she should be <laughs> but um but here you see more uh this is from cyrano cyrano de bergiac and um and so once well first of all this is framed on the wall our prior costume directors left some renderings it's fantastic um but at the end once um the line drawings and sketches and final fabrics are chosen and and um fittings even i mean way later although you don't really need it to color it and paint but um but yeah once those are chosen then then the rendering gets more colorful and filled in um and in this case um fabric swatches are are put on to the rendering and so this was a gift <laughs> to and notes too i love that right yes because yeah. it's, yep. it's a working document it's not like it's like it it's not just right. a pretty drawing and then you're done like you can't be afraid to scribble on them right <laughs> yep exactly exactly yep i love it and and then then also there is you know there there can be changes all the way through um, <laughs> till opening no <laughs> whether or not that's reflected in rendering but um but yeah so so here there's I think there are many pieces of this that still exist in costume rentals because once a show closes whatever can be reused reworn rented out um 
is kept in this gigantic warehouse. <laughs> um, yeah. So I actually, yeah. Know, I actually know some designers who like go back and re-render their clothes after opening. Yes. <laughs> that's great yeah. That's funny. yeah good yes and then another rendering from the same show mm-hmm. an actor and it's always so helpful to put these swatches like right next to your drawing because then you know like even if like these aren't the actual things like it helps to give the designer and like the creative like the the construction team like a sense of like what you're looking at in terms of material Right, exactly. Because, and that makes me think of um, actually during rehearsals, even the early meetings with the design and the actors in the rehearsal room, um, there are renderings that are just on copied on the walls. So actors can be inspired. Um, the lighting designer can, of course, in a prior meeting and other communications, see the actual fabrics, but, mm-hmm. but, um, and lighting, of course, has so much to do with that. Um, and and so, yeah, before before um, they actually get to play around on stage, they'll touch the fabrics. And <laughs> There's something so lovely about these drawings. They're like so energetic, like and like so. They're actually so simple. Like it's not like right. There's like it's like a wash of paint and then just like a scribble of a shadow. I know, simple. right? Yes, exactly. Some, some, um, yeah, exactly. Because then it's like a suggestion and then, and, um, and you trust that then through conversations and through, you know, just the, the craft artists and people that will interpret things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Linda oh. Radke. I don't think I've worked with her. Into the Woods. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Um, she teaches at Northwestern Chicago. Oh. Based. Um, and she is a living visual artist. Oh, my goodness. She literally makes a sketchbook every build and fills it with um, just mixed media. And it's it's a delight to work with her. Um, yeah, I mean... In this show, I think she actually crocheted a long uh, hooded robe for someone just because she was here in town and loved to crochet. I don't know, oh, <laughs> but anyway, <it's> like, ah. <laughs> but um, I but don't yeah, think I'm someone good enough to crochet to do that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was wild, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, since she has this close relationship with the, a knitter here in town who designs and has a loom that she can um design the different widths and and I don't even know I don't I'm making up stuff I don't know knitting (laughs) but um but yeah so then a couple of pieces were always um custom made for one of her shows I mean even if it's like custom made for one of the shows I mean yes because there's already custom made clothing in the show yeah yeah what am I talking about yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, but yeah the variegated stripes that oh it's, it's really yeah wild. I mean like even wild. looking at this it's like the stripes are going in like two different directions very deliberately right like it's like it's meant to have this sense of otherworldliness or like not things aren't quite normal here I think right so exactly beautiful. yeah <clears throat> exactly the absurd fantastical world of- mm-hmm. what was this <laughs> this rock- that was some big heavy fluffy ruffly thing <laughs> it was I just remember it was so heavy <laughs> I don't know why it's weird um but but yeah there's um actually there's a little swatch on there this that, one right like the lace yeah so that overlaid oh my goodness um but maybe I mean honestly I say it's heavy but I never lifted it. I did not change her <laughs> I didn't dress her she just like walked around with it and picking it up it ended up being longer on on her and yeah I don't remember those but anyway, um, but yeah, yeah, it's not so funny. <laughs> She's yeah, so funny. It's just like the belts off center, the pockets in a weird place. Like it's like so cute and deliberate. Yeah. Right. Yes. And I mean, um, Robin Nordley is the actor, and whether she knew how to crochet or I I knit, there were knitting needles in her little basket, and she's, you know maybe she learned you know maybe she learned that, but. I always think it's so funny like actors and they can knit something on stage and like at the end of the show they like have a scarf 
have a sound. Oh my God. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> Multitask, I guess. <laughs> Great. Oh, oh I yes. saw this. Yay. New York. Excellent. Oh, no way. The last show I saw before. Oh. <laughs> I got shut down. What a treat. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. Fair. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, keyboarding rock band, which is Lauren E, everyone, who's an amazing playwright that I really, I was actually supposed to design um, The Great Leap at Barrington Stage this sum, this past summer. That was also a Lauren E play, and I was so excited. Oh my God, like, actually, yes, The Great like, Leap, yes. Get to work on her stuff. And because I've also, oh, actually, because I've worked with Christine, um, uh, I can't figure out her last name, Strigi. Oh, Shergi. Shergi. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, mm -hmm. I've worked with her. I mean, like she she was doing King of the Yees at um at the Olney, I think, in Maryland as well. And I like worked with her a little bit on just a very, very little bit on that. Um but oh, it's okay. so fun to work on Lorenie's work. It's it's so lovely. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and Sarah Clement is also a, a set designer too. So um, sometimes oh, she's here set designing <laughs> and we're like, what, what are you doing over there? <laughs> but yeah, so she does. We can wear more than gold. one hat. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so this um, was a remount. Mm -hmm. Where was it before OSF? Um, I, can't, I can't remember. Obviously, somewhere in, oh, I do like, know this. It was somewhere on the west coast too. Cal? No, yeah. it's not Cal. No, I don't know. Somewhere on the west coast. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Because then it went, after this, it went to um, the signature. Right, right. Right. Yep. Yep. It was the same production. Right. Yeah. And then in New York, a different actor who played Satya, but mm. but. This is a, a redesign of, of some things that, from their prior um, show. So, so um, yeah, so there's a lot of research that I just patched up. Yeah. So, but, this is, uh, this, yeah, I mean, this is beautiful. It. I want this. I know, I this? right? Little, <laughs> yes. little pantsuit Ooh. with a drape. What the I heck? Know. I know, and there's a little Actually, one with a back view. Could do that. <laughs> well, actually, so actually, like, remember the pants that I had in the, the ironing board previously? Um, like, they actually kind of do that. Um, it's like a little sarong wrap over, like, flap over. That's actually really nice because it gives like the the like. It's almost like a squirt because it looks like a, a right. skirt or like a sarong, and then it's actually pants. And I lo I right. love that. It's my favorite thing ever. Great. So cool. Yeah. Yes. I might, I might make this. <laughs> I, now you have to. <laughs> I know. It's so fun. Yes. yes. Like, yep. So, uh, Moses, was, Moses, Bill around my place. Yeah. Right. And this was so fun because it was also like seeing like all of this period clothing, but in an Asian context, which was so lovely to see. Right. Yes. Yes. It was set in Cambodia it, in the 70s. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. 70s. Exactly. And um, yeah, there, I mean, there is some inherent like um, it, uh, authenticity that it, it just felt a little more effortless <laughs> than, yeah, I mean, it had, it had to be, there's just the different people who were part of it and um, that it would be authentic. Um, yeah. I mean, those so anyway. glasses remind me of my dad. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the glasses and the shirt, like that. Oh great. Yeah, like <laughs> that just like feels like my dad right there. Oh yes. Oh, so and good. look at that back view on those pants. That's beautiful. Yes. So right. Um, I remember it was it Amber Johnson who actually cut the fabric, and she was just so pleased with herself for pattern matching. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So great. There, that side oh, yeah, no, that back too? there um there was a, just a seam. Oh, was a so seam. yeah. yeah. I was just gonna yeah. say that seems really hard to pattern match too. Nuts, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. fun. But the yoke on those. I know I didn't include a lovely detail. Oh yeah. Yes. Like, oh 
don't forget the back has to look like this. <laughs> so just <laughs> so funny. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I didn't include um, renderings from Joe No, but oh, um, and so Tia yeah. in uh, OSF um, was played by um, what's her name? Oh my gosh, Ishibashi Brooke Ishibashi, and um, yeah, and she's really active in the B. Um, I can't remember the so. name of the actress who replaced her. <laughs> But she was the she was Jasmine in, Al in Aladdin, I think, and then she. Did, uh, yeah. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, Helen. Yeah. But yes, <laughs> and Helen, yay, Helen Wong. Um, this is from Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Another absurd show. No, um, and this, this was outside, and um, there were a lot of different pieces in this show that we actually in our early set of meetings had um, a lot more with the wig designer and um, Sherelle Guyton and with props and props masters. And um, because there were so many pieces that we had to do kind of in tandem and then one start this part and then hand it off and yeah. <laughs> But in this case, this ended up being a lot of work in the costume crafts world. And so artisan yeah, um, Roxana Ramser made, yeah, this different armature, kind of like a hat and made a cloth base. And then, and uh, actually used, she actually used like Rigeline, mm. I think for a lot of that, only a couple of pieces were steel. It was actually surprisingly light. Um, Anyway, uh, and then the feathers ended up being like organza. I was gonna say not layers. Feathers. Right, yeah. And um, most of those were actually purchased as the color and only like the yellow or orange had to go up to the dye room and be dipped, dyed from our dyer. Um, but yeah, there was felt and just layers and with the originally spine and, and um, yeah, millinery wire that surrounded them. And yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of piecing that was done here, but then a lot of brushing out of the edges done by volunteers. So many, so many feathers. Because <laughs> I was going to say, like, that's actually like the really amazing part about OSF, right? Is that you guys have an in house crafts department and in-house dyer who can like dye and paint that's right costumes. and like all of that is a part of the structure there right um, that's right yeah and um all the crafts artisans are trained in dyeing because they're used to working in shops that they have to do all of it right true distressing <laughs> and millinery and or you know <laughs> yeah. but um just just dip this down <laughs> just need this a little lighter <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's a separate. Um, it's also so fascinating. Building. Yeah. yeah, it's so fascinating because I think like crafts is always like a thing that in a smaller, uh, in a less supported space always falls on the, on the designer. So it's almost something wow. like I feel like sometimes I don't even know if I have the language to like tell someone else how I want something crafted because I'm so used to having to do it myself. Yeah, interesting. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's great control and immediacy mm -hmm. of course but you can't do everything <laughs> I know this is true <laughs> that's amazing but yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> but what it's else? wild it's a lot I mean we use the word communication so much but it's really in like trusting yourself and then trusting of course we are working with but 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 part of that is like stumbling through like misunderstandings or oh I, I didn't clarify or or um you know, making sure that you are explaining yourself without over explaining. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'd much rather an over explanation mm -hmm. than an under and assumption. So fine. <laughs> under explaining and, and then not there. Was it yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> Great. Oh. No, but um, okay, so this is another show that Helen designed. I um, I've actually, I've never seen this play, but I love this show so much because I've read it and I, all I want to do is design this show someday, truly. Like it's such a beautiful oh. play. Mm -hmm. Right. 
yeah it's from like 13 1400s or some cent- but like this, this is this is the rewrite but, right this is the i can't remember right. her name what's her oh i'm the, i'm gonna, this is gonna haunt me it starts with, I know. I know. This. <laughs> I on, know. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Yes. Because I, I bought this play to read. I it's actually like did a three, um, three name, three part name. Yeah, I did a <laughs> podcast where uh, they read a new play every week, and this was the play that we that I get when I guessed it on the podcast. This was the play we read. Uh, uh, oh, Francis Yashu Cowig. Yeah. Yes, Cowig. Yes, that's right. Cowig. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and then oh, such a gorgeous play. It really is. It really was so moving. And then there's a little kid in there. I mean, so these are the, it, they come, I think at the end, because they're the demons mm-hmm. that take away. Um, but anyway, um, but this armature, I mean, I'd wanted to include because there are drawings that came as we were building that really uh, illustrated once the initial rendering which, which was painted Helen has finished painting this all the time she was like oh you have a question just go to the rendering oh right right <laughs> but um but through that it's it's what can you do what what can the shop do what can props do and um and we really pieced together there was um sculpting that happened of the heads over in the props department and they had armature and they're actually interior like um framed backpack pieces that then um because it like it's a backpack that shoots up right exactly so then they welded some big steel yeah exactly Mm -hmm. so um working with the actor who went over to the shop too for fittings and um and of course within the parameters of the set and stage and um their entrances and and sometimes the blocking has to change because of mentioned things but um with that yeah there was and this very project had lighting so not only did I have to work with um props as far as time frame building and um and fittings for us and the undergarments and all the streamy things there's all this lighting elements <laughs> that um had to go with our, our lighting person, Michael Mag, and um, yeah, so there's a lot of, um, th- I mean, at the very end when we were finishing everything, um, Michael actually came into the costume shop and did a bunch of his little like soldering and light fixtures, like, okay, here you go, <laughs> just, here's your desk, here's your space, and have at it, yeah, because it was just so, you know, it was just more efficient with time and um, on stage, but yeah. It's actually, I mean, like your comment about like having to change the blocking. I feel like we did a production of uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Jen Caprio designed it at good speed. And it's the same thing, like those angel wings, like they like had to go through, like the, the doors at good speed are really small. Oh no. <laughs> it's like not even like the, the set. It's like the like theater doors are really small. Mm, it was all right. this like negotiation to figure out how are the angel wings going on and going out the door. <laughs> And it's awkwardly walking. I know, like it's like this conversation <laughs> between sets and costumes. I think that like sometimes we forget, and it's and it's so important to have that like communication right. going back and forth the entire time you right. know, about like how is this going to fit through? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, God, don't forget. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I also feel like light up costumes are always the bane of my existence. <laughs> oh, it's uh, yep. <laughs> they're, they're so difficult I feel like there's so many um variety tv shows or like competition shows where they have that el wire running up their whole body and people fall in love with that idea all the time and I have to explain to them I was like you can't do that in theater like it doesn't like the el wire mm. breaks like it's not controllable right. like there's so many things that like yes you just can't do that it doesn't work in theater like you have to at the this approximate solution is so much more expensive and like time and labor intensive than you think it is yes and then that and then that maintenance of course yeah it's the how do we handle it how do we recharge mm-hmm. when it's broken again actually when we were talking about the whiz there was a lot of lighting elements in that um there was a really cool one with the whiz actually um and the red robe but but dorothy had light up shoes oh. so there's <laughs> most didn't work most of the time it's either don't work or 
one of them were it's because it was like a smart control oh that's it's also mm. like because they have to be really bright and i think that's the other thing we always right. like they have to be so oh, yeah. bright on stage in order for people to really be able to register and see it off stage like the fiber optics mm-hmm. doesn't work either i know we tried that in college and that just that was a bust oh yeah it's like queen of yeah. the night and like it just never worked oh no. yeah god yeah there is one um i think actually helen designed it but it was it's a winter's tale and it was outside uh-huh. and the very last robe and um amy kimwaski plays i can't remember the character the queen's name but anyway um the queen but, um, the queen the queen, the queen. <laughs> and that was a fiber optic robe with a whisk that was attached to it oh my goodness sometimes it didn't work and that's just so horrendous i know because <sighs> it's like but yeah I feel like designers always want the twinkle and you're like the twinkle is actually like has to be really bright in order for this to like right yes because the optics lights. are just at the end of yeah. those fiber yeah exactly yeah that's wild but yeah i mean new tricks you gotta try it, I, guess. I know i just feel like i'm always asked to cost out light up costumes mm-hmm. And then I cost them out and then no one wants them because they're too expensive. And I'm always like, I told you, I told you it was going to be too expensive. Like, don't. Right. Like, we don't yeah. go down this path <laughs> unless like we are <laughs> absolutely certain this is what you want. Right. Yeah. 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 Funny. Mm-hmm. But I love these. These are, these are really beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I want to see this show so badly. Actually, you know, it's funny. I think um, OSF is doing some digital. Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to say <laughs> this, whole, this whole like post after some announcement. But yeah, I know this. Nothing's show, happening. Nothing, nothing to see. Nothing's here. happening. Forget it. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah, the show. And you know, it's funny. Aesthetically, Helen has um, this love for a lot of woven and. Um, what is it like armatures that are like this ox um in this image just made me think it's like this basketry and rope mm-hmm. and and also um there is some like webbing also like there is so that it's not completely translucent it's not a, a hard shell so it, there's just a lot of play in that it's really wild that i saw it again in like alice in wonderland since she designed no, like, yeah, it kind of reminds it reminds me a little bit of the Warhorse puppets. Oh uh, yes, yeah, right. This totally. one in particular. Yeah, Ricky. And then Ricky Sherman, oh. new costume shop. I worked on this one too. Job. Yes, I know you're all over the place. Do <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Did Ricky. we end up making those pants? I think so. They were so specific. I remember that. Yeah, uh, I always did it fitted, and yeah, with that. I yeah. So Ricky is definitely more on the academic side. He gave all these written summaries. I've never actually seen that. I on the was, first day. <laughs> I got I got day. an instruction booklet basically about like the fact. <laughs> accurate kinds of fabrics for the show and I actually really appreciated it because no one had ever yes. done that before I was like oh yes. like this is so fascinating to read oh my goodness right yeah yeah I mean there I mean I love that part of him who just wants to share mm-hmm. <clears throat> so yeah I mean and also he's like can I make that he's so hands-on he, oh, I can't uh, you're, you're going to be busy. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be bothered making this petticoat. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah. What a lovely person. I, I sure hope yes. I see him again soon here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Well, like, this so is everyone, what we're talking about, like how specific it is. Yes. So everyone has some. The color palette. Something written. I remember this. Yeah. 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 And each one had a storyboard, the whole page. And, mm-hmm. And this is also what we're talking about, right? Like research reflecting the people in the show. So like, if you have a person of color in your show, like actually having research images that reflect that person and not just, oh, I can't find a person of color in Victorian times. Like we know that's not true. Like you can look in the right places. Right, exactly, exactly. 
And I, I don't think I included here, but there's also um, a lot of hair research, mm -hmm. if not makeup, but actually hair styles and, and um, why and the context. Um, but I love these two, the, the, the color mm -hmm. story. Yeah, this is really helpful <laughs> when whole, I was watching. Right? I know, and I that. think those are like from Pantone, you know, I mean, like that something that we can all refer to accurately. <laughs> yes, thank you. I, think I just printed um, yeah. mine out though, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I mean, sort of. But... <laughs> I like, put it out, <laughs> stuck it on a swatch card. But like, it was so helpful to like have on the swatch card because then I'd be like, oh, like I like Got this it. color matches. Just grab that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like sometimes it comes as a picture. I know Christine like would send me paintings, um, as like as a color palette, and I would just like have that on my phone too to refer to. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Good. Wow. Oh, oh yeah. So can't read it, but there are three pages of summaries. Then this is, at least my impression oh. is that this is his summary of the characters, what happens in the scene, so that we know. I mean, honestly, when we start our meetings with costume designers and then the first run of fittings, sometimes actors, that is the very first week here on the play. <laughs> So they haven't discussed their idea of the character and that, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, it's, although it's happening less and less, but um, uh, uh, the renderings inform the actor and, oh, that's exactly what I was saying. Oh, okay. And build on that. Um, so to have this written out from Ricky's brain, <laughs> for us to have this early on is incredible so that it's not, oh, what, you know our interpretation from the scripts or you know I mean it, it so it's just more information that I just really appreciate it like, yeah and I bet <laughs> thank you it's also really helpful because you probably don't have time to read all of the plays right I mean um, like realistically kind of do <laughs> oh, okay. I know I mean realistically but, or like everyone um, else that works in the shop staggered. Room, right that's exactly right. Thank yeah. you for saying that. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that because yeah. sometimes the scripts aren't actually available. Um, now in the digital world, the, the, in, and um, having scripts up and rehearsal drafts and once you're, uh, you know, working here, can you access them? Great or great, of course. But short of that, there's literally hard copies in our library in the administrative building that you have to check out and um, it wasn't really common to pass that around. Mm -hmm. um, and not only that, sure, you could read that, but um, a lot of people like stitchers, volunteers yeah. are not going to actually be part of the show until it's up and maybe see it during a rehearsal. Um, not even through tech, you know, so for a stitcher to be able to access information yeah. and, oh and make sense version. out of like, context what yes. the skirt has to do and this is why i'm exactly. doing all of these random things it feels right random, but right yeah right and then to see this in chronological order too of like oh this where when is this skirt worn and what is it worn with and oh it comes back and um yeah there's another show that um dd designed last year how to catch creation and yeah, um, yeah i worked that on that one yeah, no way. <laughs> of course, of course. I did a lot of the paperwork on that. <laughs> oh, no way. How fun. And that, that was so beautiful in like the modern wear, but um, but it really felt authentic at like someone's closet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so a lot of pieces were, um, well, a lot of elements of their look were pieced and um, yeah. blouse. I actually think I did like the paperwork so cool. and the research and I shopped it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> oh my God. Oh also, yeah, this was a really beautiful I'm amazing. <laughs> oh, that's all, it's that's just awesome, like, that's awesome. I, do, I like, yeah. cause I was in grad school. So I would do a lot of random, like, it was really helpful actually to have all of that work because it I could do it like after school, like in the middle of the night, I would be like churning out all of this stuff. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, Diddy is so cool. She's working so much. Every time I she's know. here, she's like two other jobs and then something else. I'm like, oh. Yeah, you know, she's so busy. How much they get paid. <laughs> so 
that yeah. reflect <laughs> what we have to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This and then Carolyn Zuka. So did not happen. This didn't happen, um, but I wanted to share it anyway. <laughs> um, she designed Mother Road here, and um, before then, she is a, was a socket designer on Destiny of Desire. It's amazing play, but um, so this Wait, the show is called Everything That Never Happened, and then it didn't yes, happen. Yes, and then it didn't happen, and this is like um, oh, a, a, like a take on um. What is that Merchant of Venice? But it's like the the other family's side. So um, I read it a long time ago. I can't really remember. But but um, so uh, anyway, uh, Caro Zeller plays Jessica, and yeah, so it, it's only a line drawing, but I love this collage of yeah. items that she, is from rental that actually has like the barcode, the, the custom rentals at OSF. Um, and then here, you can pull this. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so then there's another page I didn't include here, but has more hair and fishtail braid and different specific things. Um, but yeah, it's wild, just a different interpretation of like collaging together a person. And then also the next page is like text that describe it, it's wild. Oh, like this part. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so cool. And yeah, and I see a lot more that a lot of renderings have like the headshots on the page yeah, too. So nice just, sort of like the actors that are casting the show. Totally. Yes. Love it. You know, if I have <laughs> casting, I try to draw my cat mm. like, as much as possible to draw the piece. It also just like helps you, I think, when drawing because it gives you a sense of like the body underneath the clothing. It gives you a sense of like their character and what they're going to bring to it. And I think it also like in that conversation with the actors, like when they see that you've taken the care to do that, it always mm. really excites them usually. And they get, re they're really happy about that because you've considered them and not just the character. Right, right, right. They're not some robot. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. very special. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. It's the last one, right? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Whoa. Okay, Alice. Yay. Okay. What would you do differently <laughs> if you could? <laughs> what would I do differently? Um, I would. I'm gonna make some things happen actually when we come back. But um, but really, like when we come back, it will be smaller. Um, which is kind of sad. We're so used to working in these big teams, but then smaller clusters and having different relationships with the staff here. Um, so that'll be really weird. But once the weirdness <laughs> goes away, I think um, there's a lot more. I, I don't. We, I talk about access and information, um, and I and I also really want to demystify costumes. It, you know, this, this is such a strange industry, <laughs> theater costumes, because, um, you know, the garment industry has such a, you know, like either uber expensive, you can't attain that, or it's sweatshops. You know, like the idea of, it's just such a disparity. And, and even the world. expensive stuff is made in such shops too. Exactly. And and there's this like, oh no, I don't, oh no, but, oh, but theater, <laughs> costume making. <laughs> and I just really want to um, sort of, I mean, bridge a little reality into that because there, there can be like um, rewards in the absolute, joy of making something you're making this art and craft and I completely came in it to it that way for sure um but but also like the but but also that you can anyone can actually make it um as far as like making the garments and you know and um translating the the design and making that real um so I, I'm not really saying what I'm what, what I do differently, <laughs> sorry. But um, just the concept of so many things that I would do differently. Um, but in with that, you know, you don't know who is the, 
who you're going to interact with that will make the special moment for you. You know, there's so much that is about um, making every interaction count. <laughs> um, that that is what I try to do. <laughs> I've learned so much from my three daughters that it's like, what are my expectations? Actually, my expectations are really way back because I there's so much discovery um, and there's so much like actually trusting myself so that I don't have to instruct so much there's you know um I don't know just I, I just love the relationship building <laughs> that's what I love about my job I guess um so um but I also really want to see the casualness of knowing hair texture um and also you know if it's just it's not some you can learn <laughs> and and let's not put the burden on the people who are yeah. actually um anyway it so. is fascinating because like in your comments about like how I think it, it it goes back to something actually I think we did have a conversation about on like via email about feminized labor like a while back you know yeah. and like how it's it's fascinating because like if you like costumes are kind of like the last frontier of um of things that are actually made like clothing that's actually made in america and it's always mm -hmm. fascinating to see like how as like some of that gets parceled out to other countries or like to right. um, workshops like what that means and how like in like as we look at costumes and as we look at feminized labor and how we negotiate the conversations around that like what does that actually mean for those of us who work in theater and like continue to like make costumes and make clothing in an industry that like doesn't really always appreciate like the level of skill that it takes although I think that might be a little different at OSF right. but in so many other parts of the country though right 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 there is I mean we still flip right into that you know the the wardrobe and hair and stage ops and lighting all of that of went union I mean there's a big pay disparity that was being leveled out or whatever but I mean there's reasons that that happened mm -hmm. it didn't it didn't like um arbitrarily happen yeah. <laughs> so there's absolute reality in that and um yeah but um I kind of lost my train of thought. sorry <laughs> but yeah um, so you're back at halftime at OSF what does what does that mean and like what does I mean like what is OSF's plan for the future if you can <laughs> share any of that with us like what is that going to look like um it's I think it is I mean all I know is that we need to make money <laughs> yeah of course. all I know is that well uh the shops are going to be a lot smaller um mm -hmm. no the I mean all across the board across the festival um but um I don't really know half time for me right now is um I'm helping out costume rental so that is uh it is for profit even though OSF is a not-for-profit organization that actually pays its own bills <laughs> no. but um but really it's um well, all the local schools and theaters get a high like 90 percent discount whatever but 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 they rent out to other universities and theaters operas um even saturday night live calls and different random book covers and you know um but but they they call and they rent the costumes so that has increased with covid <laughs> the business has and so heather debay who manages that shop or the the rental um needs a little more help and so like okay OSF is well like, people are doing shows <laughs> I don't know people are like renting costumes yeah yeah, yeah. planning some shows oh. um, some some yeah mm. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah little things and then I think there's one that's like um yeah yeah I mean I mean strange strange that yeah. it's like the the optimism renting them out shipping them out to um yeah put up in a month or two like yeah. I don't know. but um so that's that and then this week um we're just doing a lot more 
planning different scenarios so what ifs um what if that with the state with keep around with the oregon <laughs> protocol and and um what they're allowing us to to maybe do we're just sort of waiting there's so many different scenarios no. of, as far as like it's so well, hard to what, plan what if we open in yeah it really is <laughs> i know like my like my five-year life plan was like tossed out the window in march and i'm like now what yeah no, like, like, maybe when there's things. a vaccine like when i get a, get vaccinated i'll be able to like make them start making a plan again i have no idea oh my god start yep <laughs> It's, I know. Know, like, uh. <laughs> like, do I go back to the States? I don't even know anymore. Wow. Well, yeah, know. right. Right. Yeah. Yes, that'll un unfold. <laughs> I, I yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, last question, Alice. If you were a fresh grad now, what would you do? If, if I'm saying sorry, say that again. If, if you were a fresh grad now, so if you were oh, in a graduating God. class, oh my God, 2021, what would you do? I do. Um, I would take notice and count of my closest friends, peers, and and really take note of who is inspiring you, um, because. And who you want as a mentor. <laughs> That's what I would really make a list and um, and really um, count those because they are a lifetime. You can absolutely um, cherish the people around you and and um, trust that, that they'll take you, they'll help you along the way and take you in one thing turns into another, turns into another. And um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you never know, you never know who you come across and how you'll impact them. And it could be life lasting. So um, I don't know, I appreciate the people around you. <laughs> really like believe what you're doing and what your interests are will actually get you to where you want to be someday. I mean, you might not have it all mapped out. I didn't, I certainly didn't. And um, yeah, yeah. But it really is about like trusting yourself, trusting your intuition for sure. <laughs> yes. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Alice, for taking, sharing your time with us. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for asking me. Such an nice. honor. So great. <laughs> so glad I finally got to talk to you in personal. Yeah. <laughs> Some kind oh my of goodness. Business. I know. I <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I still don't know what Marilee or Heather look like. <laughs> <laughs> that's on a so phone, weird. text yes. on a phone, that's it. Right. Oh, that's so weird. Someday, someday I'll get it. I know, I was like, it's Johanna, not Johanna. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that so funny? It's just so oh. random, but it's like, oh, through text and email, yeah. you wouldn't get that, yeah. you know? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it was so good talking with you. Sounds Anytime, good. do it again. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a plan. Heck yeah. Okay. Yay. Thank you so much, Alice. Yeah, we'll stay safe. Keep, keep making your amazing stuff, Singapore or New York, anywhere. I know, Maybe I know. Around here, maybe you'll design here someday. <laughs> I mean, that was Come part on. of the, that was part of the five years. <laughs> <laughs> that could still be there. Come on, oh, let's get it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Fingers are crossed. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Alice. Yeah. Take care. Thank you.